The great John Rothman, he does a podcast called Around the Political World with John Rothman. What a year you're going to have. There really? Is, just, is there something so, going on this year, Mark? There is. They say, I mean, I know it's often said, but it really does feel true. The most important election of our lifetimes. Uh, I was looking at something this morning talking about swing states and how critical they are since the Electoral College, it's utterly ridiculous. I mean, you could probably give us the 45 second history on how we ended up with this crap, but how it's uh, visiting upon the entire American population of voters, a toxicity that doesn't even represent their voice. Meaning if you look at Hillary Clinton, she beat uh, Donald Trump by millions of votes. If you uh, look at, um, uh, at, 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 tell me, you can tell me the last, I think Bush won, Al right? Gore. Pop, Al Gore. Al Gore won over a half a million votes more than George W. Bush. Right. So, I mean, and, and of course, in the latest election, we, we saw um, Donald Trump fall, um, but you began oh, no, to no, see. No, no, Mark, he won the election. Didn't you, didn't you hear what he said? Oh, sorry. That's right. Thank you. I just want to correct you. But, John, uh, uh, give me 45 seconds on how we ended up with the Electoral College and then how you see these swing states. And then I will tell you the strategy, I think, that makes sense. I'm sure you've already thought of it, but I'll still underscore it. That makes sense for the Democrats to try to get some of these swing states for the Electoral College victory that they'll need. How do we end up with this Electoral College anyway? It, it was very simple, Mark. The founders were not sure they trusted the people. So if you had electors, they could overturn what the people wanted if it were necessary. And so that was the logic behind it. It was a, a safety valve, if you will. And it worked, I have to tell you, for most of the history of America until we hit an election like 1876 when Samuel J. Tilden defeated Rutherford B. Hayes by half a million votes and still Tilden uh, lost 185 to 184 in the Electoral College. And we saw another example in 1888 when we saw, again, the popular majority defeated by the Electoral College in the rematch between Harrison and Cleveland. So we have a system. People want to change it. If you want to change it, we have to have an amendment to the Constitution. Well, it won't be changed because it serves the uh, GOP so well. Obviously, the Democrats are not at all served uh, by this. And when you say it worked for so long, what do you mean by that? I mean, there were no disputes. Okay. That it was a clear, decisive victory. Uh, really, 1876, 1888, those are the two examples in the 19th century. And in the 20th century, it, it, it's a very interesting point. Richard Nixon, who many people view as a villain, did not challenge the result of the 1960 election. He could have. He felt he really carried Illinois and Texas. And in the end, he conceded those states to John F. Kennedy and lost in the Electoral College 303 to 219. But if he'd carried Illinois and he'd carried Texas, he would have won the electoral vote. Kennedy, by the way, may have actually lost the popular vote. Uh, depends how you count the vote. Uh, did he win by 112,450 votes, by 118,450 votes? Or did Nixon, if you subtract Mississippi and Alabama, where Kennedy wasn't even on the ballot, but the Democratic rooster was, then Nixon would have won the popular vote. So, you know, it just depends how you calculate things. Who we was the, uh, was it Stalin, what's Stalin's quote about uh, the vote? Wasn't it... Uh, it doesn't, was it Stalin? Maybe I'm as ascribing it to, to uh, Stalin and it wasn't him, but uh, I thought it was, uh, I don't care about the, uh, about the, uh, the vote. I don't care about con controlling the, the voting. I can ch c care about controlling the counting. Yeah, that's, um, that's what every, every yeah. uh, crooked judge, crooked vote counter says in the United States. Yeah. Uh, and so to the swing states, John, mm -hmm. uh, First of all, just the last thing on this, because it came up in the chat. I mean, the the notion that it brings underpopulated states sort of to the table at the same level that a, a, well, does a it, popular if, state. Look, Mark, if you go to a popular vote uh, alone, no candidate for president is going to campaign in any of the small states. But we now know that if you campaign for the presidency and you have to win the Electoral College, you've got to go to small states. And if you don't, as Hillary Clinton did not, 
in uh, 2016, you lose the election. Nixon is the only candidate for president to campaign in all 50 states. He made it a point. He made it a pledge. And you know what he did the day before the election? He was up in Alaska instead of being in Illinois. And that may have cost him the election. Uh, there's a lot of that, right, as you say, with uh, with Hillary Clinton as well. Uh, just on that point, Joseph Stalin said some version of it's not the people who vote that count. It's the people who count the votes that count. Uh, well, isn't that that you could describe that to Donald Trump? Right. Yes. Uh, and by the way, it was said by a lot of other people, too. I just was looking on Snopes, but it was interesting uh, to, you know, to. Yes. Uh, so uh, we'll get to Trump in a minute. But of course, he'll he's the presumptive leader uh, and the presumptive candidate uh, on the GOP side. And so um, we get to a yeah, presumptive to ding word. You're right. Uh, so let me get to those swing states, John, which becomes so critical. Sure. Uh, it, it strikes me that the abortion question might bring more boys to the yard for the Democrats uh, and even among independent Republican Excuse voters. Me, did you say more boys? It'll bring more women. I know, but I meant it's a it's a it's a lyric about. from a song. But, uh, yeah. but yes, you're right. I was it was uh, it was the wrong uh, thing to. It's just that you didn't sing it properly. It'll bring more people to the uh, ballot box. Sure, take a look. Seven states have already repudiated the Republican hardline on abortion. And uh, and so the strategy would be this, John. How do you feel about this? Mm -hmm. You put abortion on the ballot as a state by state issue. You get it on there. That will bring out those men and women who care about women's reproductive rights in their state it'll bring them to the you, you need to you need to get turnout right that's what i'm thinking oh you're going to get turnout we've seen it in seven states including a, a state like kansas uh people are turning out clearly men and women and i think it's going to be one of the critical issues and let me tell you the other critical issue may be the supreme court let's see what the supreme court does with all of these cases involving donald trump there could be a huge backlash and my suggestion to you is uh, the Democrats should feel pretty good about swing states because the Republicans are taking the stands on issues like a woman's right to choose to the extreme. And they will lose votes if they do that. Well, my thinking is, John, that while that's true on the issues, the issues are defined by the zeitgeist around the election, meaning if you can remind everyone of these things you talk about, the Supreme Court, abortion, women's uh, reproductive rights, uh, then that'll be in voters' heads. If it's all about the Middle East and the price of gas, if it goes back up, whatever, you know what I mean? You can, you can or cultural wedge issues, uh, uh, trans rights, whatever, whatever yeah, if, uh, if issue you, you want to whip up. Yeah. I watched Fox this morning. They're doing a whole thing on trans rights. Sure. That's and, my point. And, the, yeah. and but I have to tell you, I believe that has very limited appeal. That is why the Republican base, in my judgment, is narrowing. And I think when Nikki Haley made the unbelievable comment uh, while you were on vacation about slavery, uh, not or not mentioning slavery in the context of the Civil War, it did her tremendous damage. Uh, and so my, my feeling at this point is that the Democrats on the issues will have the upper hand in swing states. And I'm talking about Wisconsin, I'm talking about Michigan, I'm talking about Pennsylvania, I'm talking about the, the big states that Donald Trump feels he needs to carry or the Republicans have to carry. And it's clear that those are not issues that resonate with voters. So my, my feeling today, and remember, we're, we're uh, still quite a bit away from the election itself in November, uh, is the Republicans are on the losing side. By the way, if they try to push this idea of a six-week ban on abortion, uh, believe me, it'll turn people out. Uh, and well, they just, I mean, this, te this Texas ruling on abortion is pretty big that just hit in the last day, you know, which uh, essentially prevents women from it it, it doesn't uh, normally the way it works is if you show up to the ER and it's uh, your your life on the line, they can, 
uh, preemptively or they can uh, respond in an urgent way by yeah. providing an abortion to this woman who's otherwise would the way lose the her Texas life. Law reads. That's like, like if you're having horrible pain because you have an ectopic pregnancy, right? And it's going to burst and you're going to die and you show up in the emergency room. They should be able to help you. But Texas, now uh, in Texas, the, 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 the law will be that you cannot, you cannot. And that, that will the, be the driving just, issue, which will turn women yeah. and men out to vote yeah. against Republicans. Yes and no. You have to keep it in the conversation is my point. Is. You, 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 I mean, I, I get it. I, I agree with you, but I'm suggesting you have to keep it in the conversation. And just to be pure about it, the, the Texas law doesn't require physicians there to provide that, uh, relief to the woman who needs the abortion to have her life saved. Um, the, uh, the point I'm trying to make, and I think I've made it, and and we're we're going back and forth on this, is just that it it has to continue in the conversation. And now I would push back a, a little bit on the, even the Nikki Haley thing. You said that Nikki Haley was hurt by the slavery comments. I'd say she was hurt with lib centrist media, but she knew who she was playing to, John. She plays to, she's a South Carolinian for God's sakes. She is playing to her crew. She's in a primary to get the GOP, uh, 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 to, to win the GOP primary. So uh, nomination is the word I wanted, <laughs> to get the GOP nomination such that she has to play to that crew. You don't agree with that? No, I agree with you. And I think what she did was uh, fairly typical of what Nikki Haley has done throughout her political career. <laughs> right. Look how it's rebounded against her. If you listen to Fox last night, they were taking her on on this issue. Oh, is that uh, right? Yes, and I believe very strongly the Democrats are going to couch their campaign in just that way. Uh, I don't think Nikki Haley will be the Republican nominee for president or vice president. Uh, I think she'll be an asterisk in this campaign, just like George Romney's brainwashing comment, which eliminated him but left nothing there uh, in the end. Right. So... This will be framed really on Trump. And although the issues are critical, the other thing is that if I were questioning Donald Trump, I would ask him, who won the election of 2020? And if he says I did, that'll be another thunderous issue. And may I tell you, I am now reading Liz Cheney's book, which I have to tell you is one of the most powerful and compelling books against Donald Trump I've ever read, along with another book called The Romney Reckoning, which uh, Mitt Romney didn't write, but he contributed to. Let me tell you something. If the Democrats lose this election, I'll be very surprised. And may I also point out, the Republicans are holding up uh, money for Ukraine, even as the Russians are bombarding Ukraine. Uh, they are holding up money in the Middle East for the Israelis. And this is not going to do wonders at all for the Republicans controlling the House of Representatives. I think the House is going to go Democratic. And I'm not saying that as a partisan. I'm just taking it a hard look at it. The Senate. What about is the more, Senate? Ta no, take me to the Senate. Senate. That's a more problem. problematic. More yeah. problematic. Uh, explain, to, explain to us why the Senate is more problematic, please, sir. Uh, well, uh, you have a far more powerful body. They confirm justices of the court. No, but but the why? Senate, why we may lose the, the Democrats and those who are lean lib or centrist may lose the Senate. Can you get, touch on that? You lose yes, cinema. You you, you lose uh, mansion. Go ahead. That's right. You have. You, well, you've just said it. There are Democrats that are retiring or leaving and who will replace them. But I have to tell you, the Democrats have a big problem. If, for instance, on the Supreme Court question of immunity for Donald Trump, uh, blanket immunity, if that were to come down from the court in defiance of the United States versus Richard Nixon, I believe the outrage would be so great that, again, the Republicans would have a terrible time winning control of the Senate. The Democrats understand that. The worst enemy the Republicans have right now is their own politics and Donald Trump. And I'm not saying that as a partisan. I just believe it to be true. Well, the what, they're go, what they're going to do, I thought I saw something even in the chat about this, John, and this is kind of what I'm talking about when I talk about getting something into the conversation. And it's not just the conversation. Let me make this point, and then I'll address this. It's, it's about immigration. Uh, but I want to make this point clear. The idea and the strategy that I'm forwarding is that you need to get abortion and women's reproductive rights, not in the conversation, of course you want that, but you need to get it on the ballot. You need to get it 
uh, memorialized in a constitution, a state constitution. There needs to be a referendum on it. That will bring people to the ballot box in those states where you need to get people to the ballot box. I agree with you. If if the Republicans uh, persist in their six-week ban, and that is what Mike Pence proposed and that I think Nikki Haley embraces, there will be a reaction. People understand the implication, sure. even if it's not on the ballot. But that gets it into the conversation. Like I agree with that. It wasn't yeah. the presidential election year, and women turned out in overwhelm and men in overwhelming numbers to slap down that kind of thing. I, look, well, I it had say- just it, it within that calendar year, it had uh, Roe had been overturned. I mean, that was pretty big. But hey, let me just get you onto this. We get this. Uh, Delwood Kelp said. By the way, Delwood Kelp. If that's your real name, you have the best name of anyone who's ever been in our chat. Send me a picture of your birth certificate with the name Delwood Kelp, and I will send you back a piece of Mark merch. All right? (laughs) Delwood Kelp is a great name. I do not believe it's real, but if it is real, Delwood, damn it, I will send you a piece of, uh, of Mark merch. He says, Trump may overwhelm media with visual immigration issue. Flood of illegal crossings. Mark and John downplaying the anger. Uh, Delwood is right. We talk about immigration a lot on this show. Maybe not enough, maybe too much. But let's talk about it as a political cudgel. I mean, it is used by both sides as uh, the thing and the problem in America. Meanwhile, there are no real creative suggestions as to how to solve the problem. That's precisely right. There is no solution. And if Donald Trump talks about building a wall again, you know, that's going nowhere. And Mexico is not going to pay for it. And interestingly enough, I heard the numbers this morning that the illegal immigration numbers are down uh, at this moment. So I can't tell you, I I know it's an issue. I know Fox emphasizes it as an issue. I know CNN and MSNBC are covering it as an issue, but I don't think it will be the decisive issue uh, because uh, there's no real answer. It just isn't an answer. And Donald Trump's bluff and bluster or the Republicans bluff and bluster. Look where the Speaker of the House of Representatives is today. He's leading 60 Republican members of the House down to the border. Uh, it's it's grandstanding, and I don't think it will make any difference at all. So, it, Well, uh, uh, John, I mean, it, uh, of course I agree with you. It is grandstanding, and it's complete politics, and even these uh, photo ops at the border are are, are, are just that. But I, I, I don't, the idea that it won't make any difference, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, the image that Trump has real or imagined or you know created mm-hmm. is as being tough on immigration that and his border policy and is, he t- is not tough. tough and that yeah. was the whole point of his administration the Democrats will make that case but let me assure you that Donald Trump himself if he is the nominee is going to be an issue there are many compelling issues about Donald Trump people feel very uncomfortable about Donald Trump And he is going to continue to make people feel uncomfortable. Remember, very often, a president is elected not by who you're for, but who you're voting against. And I still believe, and I may be wrong, uh, it wouldn't be the first time, as my wife will tell you, uh, that in this campaign, if Donald Trump is the nominee, he carries too many negatives. Uh, And I think the Democrats are going to exploit that. Now, the question Uh, of Joe Biden and what Joe Biden does is a whole other question. Uh, Andrew Peters, who's kind of a, uh, in our chat, he's sort of a, uh, he's a contrarian. Uh, he, he's a big Trumpy, I think. RFK Jr. will play spoiler, John. Do you, give me a notion on RFK Not Jr. unless he's on the ballot. And let me yeah. tell you, getting on the ballot in enough states to make a difference for Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is going to be tough. And I believe that if Kennedy were to run, he would be a spoiler. But I can tell you he'll be a spoiler for the Republicans, not the Democrats. Because too many Republicans embrace conspiracy theories just like Robert Kennedy Jr. That's what B.A. Ware says. Doesn't RFK Jr. take more votes from Trump than Biden, though? Indeed. I believe so. But yeah. I don't uh, know that he will be a factor because he's not going to get on the ballot in very many states. And if he gets on the ballot in swing states, he'll take votes from Republicans, not Democrats. Bob Menendez is a Democrat from Jersey, is it? Yes, and New he, Jersey. Uh, he's now got even bigger issues when it comes to allegations that are criminal. Excuse me. Do you have some gold bars you'd like to send me? (laughs) Uh, That's my 
that's my favorite part, actually, of Bob Menendez is that he's got the gold bars. I, I have mad respect for people with uh And if he's convicted, gold. he won't have gold bars, but he will have bars. Oh, I love it. I well, almost want to ding that. It's uh, it's so uh, strong. Um, so Senator Bob Menendez um, introduced a member of the Qatari royal family and a principal in a company with ties to the government of Qatar to a New Jersey businessman before that company invested millions of dollars in the businessman's real estate project. This is a new indictment, just came in yesterday. Yep. This latest version of the indictment against Democrat uh, uh, Bob uh, Menendez. Menendez is in Manhattan Federal Court. Didn't identify the member of the Qatari royal family, but it said the individual was a principal in the Qatari investment company. And remember, and we're relying on Qatar right now for the negotiations in the Middle East. And right. they have always been a corrupt government, and we all understand that, but you play with the players that are playing. Yeah. I mean, pretty much everybody in the game is corrupt on some level. Um, so their businessmen charged along with side Menendez and all of this. I'm, I'm wondering if you could give me a moment on Menendez. He's actually beaten back once. Uh, you can give me some history on this. Hung, but jury, hung jury, not declared innocent. Hung jury. Right. Right. Hung and jury will, on his last the last criminal charge. Go ahead. What's the story finished. on this one? He's finished. Uh, he's it's done. only a question of time and whether when justice catches up with him. Does uh, that matter they, to the count for Democrats as well, John? No, because I believe any Democrat who goes into that seat uh, will win. That's not a state Republicans have had much luck in carrying in recent years. Right. You remember the last Republican in New Jersey who was really popular? Clifford Case. And that's going back a long time. Well, I don't, I don't remember that. <laughs> uh, uh, here's a question from Russ for John Rothman. Does Donald Trump still have his security clearances? Yes. He's a former president of the United States. And as far as I know, he is still receiving security clearances. Wow. And briefings. That includes a former president is generally entitled to CIA, FBI, and so forth. John, I will finish with you uh, with a little... I hope not. I don't want to be finished. The year's just starting. A little question about uh, the Middle East. Yes. Uh, first, in the X's and O's of what's going on there, uh, the Israeli military took out, I believe, the Hezbollah chief. No, Hamas. Oh, Hamas chief. I'm sorry, Hezbollah. But it was in a Hezbollah area, wasn't it in Lebanon? That is correct, because Hamas and Hezbollah are allies. So just Sheikh to remind Nassim. everybody, this is why I made that even, that, that I got a little confused also. Uh, so Hezbollah com controls southern Lebanon, okay? And Hamas controls the Gaza, okay? Correct. And I believe Islamic Jihad, they control a lot, a lot of the West Bank area, isn't that? No, no, uh, they don't control it, but they have a real voice. They even have a presence, Gaza. okay. They don't if control Hamas it. collapsed... <laughs> As yeah. the Israelis want, Islamic Jihad is the logical successor. Okay, so you've got those. Uh, th so anyway, so in southern Lebanon, where, again, Hezbollah hangs out, and they really do control things, and they have a lot of sophisticated weaponry there and all the rest, they, um, uh, I guess the Hamas uh, uh, deputy leader um, uh, was killed by the That's Israelis. Correct. Yeah. Now, the Israelis uh, aren't claiming it, but they are the ones who did it, of course. Now... Uh, it's suggested as a possibility, and then I want to get to the broader issue, but it's suggested as a possibility as a result of this, that this might somehow embroil Lebanon in all of this or embroil um, other factions in a wider conflict. Can you speak to that? Yeah, Sheikh Nasrallah is about to give a speech. Uh, it may be happening as you and I are talking. I've got to check as soon as we're out, uh, and you might want to check it as well, uh, because he's very angry. This is really an assault on, on him in a way because he was, this is his area, and he was protecting a uh, Hamas military leader. So there are real consequences. Remember that Hezbollah has 150,000 rockets. They are far more sophisticated than what Hamas has. If they were to unload on Israel, uh, let me tell you, it would be a disaster because Iron Dome could not take out all of those rockets. Let me also remind you that already 300,000 Israelis who live in the north of the country have been evacuated because there is a genuine fear that Nasrallah will ultimately let loose. So the question is, why hasn't he up to now? Because Nasrallah understands that if he does, Israel will destroy him. And he doesn't want to be destroyed. <laughs> you know, he, he, This is a matter of him for survival. So he's got to play 
several things. That's why his speech uh, is going to be so significant uh, today uh, as to how he chooses to respond. But well, let me point out again, yeah, 300,000 Israelis have had to vacate their homes in northern uh, Israel. I believe Hamas has already won. And because they don't care about anything but throwing Israel into this pariah status that the Israelis, sadly, I think, have uh, ended up uh, in uh, this status that suggests that they are, you know, this genocidal administration. And I just remind you that genocide means mass destruction. If Israel wanted to kill all the Palestinians, they could have, and they haven't. That's why it's not genocide, and that's why we have to reject that notion. Uh, I mean, it, right. it's important that you it's important that you mention the the word because the word is radioactive. Uh, but it, more to the point, it's a, it's a horror show in Gaza. But that's I believe what Hamas wants. They You're embedded right. them they embedded themselves in a civilian population. You're right. There aren't bomb shelters in the Gaza Strip. There are millions and billions of dollars have gone in there, and there are no bomb shelters. No, there are tunnels. And all of these sophisticated tunnels. tunnels, they are immensely sophisticated and, and extensive. And may I just point out quickly, those are, only for Hama- those are only for Hamas fighters. So that Hezbollah is, I mean, is has a, a more sophisticated tunnel network, and we now know, in southern Lebanon. So if that front opens up, it will be horrific for everyone. Uh, and I just want to point that out. The I did a podcast on this calling it the unthinkable, but it is entirely probable. And you heard what happened in Iran this morning, and that is that there were explosions uh, at the commemoration of the four year, uh, three year anniversary of the death of one of their leading fighters. And I would remind you that the president of Harvard, as you pointed out, was uh, was resigned in the end for two reasons. One, because she wouldn't condemn genocide against Jews. Let me emphasize it was genocide against Jews that she was iffy about. And the other thing is plagiarism. Uh, And either way, uh, she is now gone. It's a very serious question in the United States. Uh, I don't know whether or not people are really following the traffic jams in New York or even the traffic jams uh, that were developed here in uh, Northern California uh, and the battles that are taking place in city councils. This This is a very serious issue, but you are correct in pointing out the implications for Lebanon and Nasrallah. One other quick point, Lebanon doesn't really have a functioning government. You understand that. Uh, Lebanon doesn't really exist as a nation. Uh, And the division in Lebanon itself between Christians, Shiites, Sunnis, and Druze is still profound. Uh, I have a very good friend who is a Christian from Lebanon. His family is still there. And I asked him what he thought. He said, don't worry, we're okay. And we don't really worry about Hezbollah. We hope that the Israelis take them out. So you have a real question uh, that's going on right now in the broader Middle East. And let me also say with Iran, one other quick point, I know we're running out of time. The United States is now involved. We took out four vessels the Houthis were using in the Red Sea. Why? Because if you take a look at a map, you will see that the Red Sea area takes Israel shipping into account. Uh, You close the Red Sea, you close off a lot, Uh, you've got a serious problem for the Israelis. So there are a lot of moving parts here. And it is explain maybe just for the sake of it, again, you can do it in 15 seconds, the the Houthis again and their relationship to Iran. Oh, they're supported by Iran. They get their their terror. They're a terrorist organization out of Yemen. Yes. And the same thing applies with Hamas and Hezbollah. This is a coalition of terrorists. And it's it's a that's exactly right. Yeah. Um, California synagogues forced to shut down yesterday because of local and federal law enforcement investigations. They've got many email threats. More than 100 synagogues sent emails claiming explosives were on the property. Absolutely. Uh, These are scary times. For Jews, this is a very scary time. And that's why I emphasize the question of the president of Harvard. The reason she got into trouble was because standing before, sitting before a congressional committee, she would not denounce genocide against Jews. And I want to underline the word Jews. That's what did it to her. And although the plagiarism thing plays a role, because she did plagiarize, it's very clear now, uh, that is the the kicker. People were furious. And I must tell you, when I listen to some people on the other side who say, well, it's only because she's black or only because she's a woman, that's absolutely untrue. she had great support and would have had great support till she made two fundamental mistakes. She wouldn't denounce genocide against Jews and plagiarism. So that's her problem. She is now 
had the shortest tenure of any president of Harvard University. There's nothing like libs turning on themselves. The other side that you talk about is another branch of the Libby libs. I mean, it's all happening on the Libby lib side. You can not uh, be virtuous enough for the liberal wing and uh, the uh, idea somehow that, you know, I, what I thought was an easy question. I can't believe they booted those questions in uh, in the front of that committee, uh, right. that that could and, be okay. the beginning Who's of the raising end. raising the big issue? Listen to Al Sharpton. Al Sharpton claims this is purely a matter of racial bias. Right. I mean, black. that's what I'm talking about. I mean, he, Al Sharpton is a lib. All right. Anyway, uh, I'm out of time. I uh, love talking to what? you. We can get more into the dynamics in the, what? You're out of the time? Middle East, I hope. <laughs> hey, His, we're glad uh, you're back. I didn't hear all of your adventures. I can't wait. But I want you to know Kim McAllister did a brilliant job of filling in for you. And uh, I know we're talking about giving everybody a raise here. So Kim deserves it. Well, she is terrific. Uh, we couldn't possibly pay her more than we already pay her, though. But thank you uh, for uh, for that. Yes, exactly. Uh, John Rothman, everybody. I love it. Bye, John. Yeah, you. yeah. Hi, it's Mark. And I thought that was great. Hit the notification bell. You'll know whenever there's a new video being dropped. And please subscribe to our channel to help us save the universe.